Hey, I'm Melanie. And I'm Anna. And we're back with you this week to share our faith, our family, and God with mm -hmm. you. And I hope you had a great Resurrection Day. Yesterday was Resurrection Day. Yay! He's alive! Sorry. <laughs> You First got me. Of course, I know. We had a great church service and like that. and it's just a nice day. Yeah. It was great. It was a good weekend. Mm hmm It was good. Good weekend. And prayed a lot about what we could talk about this week. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about pressure. <laughs> because we all face pressure. Mm -hmm. And I, I was thinking about that because I was like, well, Lord, what can I do when this happens or this happens? Because I want to set way to handle it and I didn't want to talk about it because I was like you know I don't <laughs> I don't have the answer I don't have an answer all I have is questions and so I began to pray about it more and more and then today I went to Walmart and there was a lady there and she was she was there was a lady what <laughs> in Walmart a woman with children with children <laughs> <laughs> so there was this woman behind me in line at the checkout at Walmart and she has three children. They're all under the age of five. God bless her. Or so, bless her bones. <laughs> and they were just, you know, doing what kids do. And they've got the big, all the stuff there. They're trying to make you buy mm -hmm. when you check out. And the littlest kid, who's probably a year old, grabs, reaches over the buggy and grabs a jar, of, a bottle of fingernail polish. Well, he's playing with it. And, you know, I'm like, oh. So I turn around. All of a sudden, I smell paint. And I'm like, oh, they must be redoing our Walmart. That's my thing. And I'm looking mm -hmm. around. I don't see any paint. And so I turn back, and the kid, there, there's just pink everywhere. The kid has mm. whammoed this fingernail polish bottle. <laughs> and the whole, the glass has actually broken. I've never even seen that happen. The glass broke, and polish was everywhere. Wow. And the mother's just like, oh. <laughs> I just want to go home. Exactly. And Where's your mother? Exactly. <laughs> and so we always say we're going to do this, but I am. After today, I am. There's... I, we always say we're going to get Starbucks cards, little five dollar yeah. gift cards, and when we see that kind of stuff, we're just going to be like, yeah. "There you go, <laughs> you can do you it. Can Have do some this. coffee. It's okay. it's okay. Nobody's judging you. Yeah. You're a good mom." And so today, this happened, and I leaned back and I said, "I wish I could give you a Starbucks card." And she said, "I wish I could give you my kids." <laughs> I know how you feel, honey? <laughs> exactly. I'm like, "Hey, we've been there. I know it's it, okay. right?" It's a and season. It is a season. But that is the kind of pressure that we deal with because every day, all day, constant, because of the seasons that we're in in our life. Mm -hmm. But even if you're single and not married, you're facing pressure every day from financial financial pressure mm -hmm. and, and, and relationship relationships pressure. and work. A person in your life, you have pressure at some point or another. Exactly. Exactly. And so we were trying to figure out, you know, or I was trying to figure out, and I brought her into the mix what can what I, do I do? Exactly, because I had all these questions and I had no answers. I even called our pastor's wife and I was like, look, mm -hmm. I just, you know, what would you tell somebody if when they were facing that pressure, what is their answer for that? And she said, well, gosh, I don't know. <laughs> <It's> Great. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but you know what? <clears throat> that was really freeing for yeah. me because it made me go, wow, I'm not alone. I'm not the only yeah. idiot. I'm not, you well, know. Well, again, we've said before, you know, you think everybody's got it together. Everybody knows the answer. And I just never got the handbook. Right. Nobody that. told me. I'm Nobody told me to what tell to do. You. <laughs> exactly. But that's not true. That is not true. And she and I did talk and we came up with some, some things that we both shared experiences and, mm -hmm. and things that we'll share with you here. But what we have found through our study and through our prayer is that there is no set formula right that hey in situation a you're going to do this in situation b you're going to do this you're always going to be able to do this and you're always there's no there's nothing like that but there is an answer yeah mm -hmm. and the answer begins the answer begins spiritually in luke chapter 6 verses in the bible. 47 and 48 in the bible <laughs> the new king james, james Bible. version yes we've had okay. some hiccups we with had that, some so. hiccups with that mm -hmm. i say that three yeah. times fast so this is jesus talking this is jesus talking and he says to the people whoever comes to me and hears me and my sayings and does them i will show you who he is like he is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock and when the flood rose and the stream beat vehemently against that house it could not shake it because it was founded 
on the rock. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have to do. We have to hear the sayings, we have to do them, and we have to build our foundation on that rock. We have to start, sweep away all the trash. Right. And that takes you being humble and coming to God and just, you I know, can't our, do it. Yeah, our pastor said it on Sunday be real with God. And that was God something knows. that stuck out with to me. But it's you come into the point where you're like, God, I can't do this. This is where I'm at, and I need help. And you just lay it out there and then and begin you can to start build to work that foundation. Right. right. You can't build a foundation until you do that. Yeah. But you begin to build that foundation. And when you lay, you dig deep. That's digging in the Word. Reading that Bible. Reading your Bible. Dig deep mm -hmm. and lay that foundation. Then you can begin to renew your mind. Mm -hmm. And renewing your mind is putting the Word of God in it. And when, as we, Romans 12 and 2 says, be not conformed to the world, but be transformed. And that's what we want. We want to be want different. To different. We want to be different. So we want to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And I know, talking about pressure, this is the season of life that I'm in. I don't have hours. I barely have minutes to devote to, you know, just like, well, like I used to do. I talked once about... <laughs> I don't remember when. <laughs> At some about, point. About, yeah, when I, my first pregnancy, when I was on bed rest, and I had all that time. But I don't have that time now. And so, I might want to what? The cat, the cat just peed in the bird box. We'll check that later. So, <laughs> we lay that foundation. Then right. we want to be transformed. I don't have a lot of time, time to transform my mind. And so, we renew our minds. What, what I, we, my pastor's wife, we were talking about, she also has five children. And she said, you know what we have done is we just post scriptures. Mm -hmm. Then in the kitchen, you know, walk in love. Put them on the mirror in the bathroom. Put them, on put the them in your the car and your dashboard. And Write put them the thing, on your and, arm. <laughs> yeah, I know. But you have to read it. Yeah. And you have to read it in those moments when you don't want to read it. Yes. And you have to read it purposefully choosing to yield to the, what that says. I heard uh, there was a lady that told a story about posting um, in Corinthians 13, mm -hmm. the love chapter, love is patient, love is kind. And she would read through it and what stuck out to me, she was like, the more that she read through it purposing, okay, I'm going to walk in love. Love is patient. Love is kind. It got into her spirit and it changed her. It transformed her. Yeah. She renewed over her time. Mind. Right. At first over it was time. that hard choice, but then over time it became the fruit of the spirit producing love in her because it got so built up in her. Well, it's because she yielded to it. Right. In that, and this is one thing that I actually heard her do one day at her house. I, I know. <laughs> Aw. I heard her. She was in the kitchen. I don't even. I was sitting at the table and she was over in the kitchen. <laughs> wow. If you, I wish you just we could do a panoramic of the birds <laughs> and the cats and the cats and the curtain. <laughs> yeah. So, I was sitting at the table. And she was in the kitchen, and I saw her in there going, I yield to joy. I yield to joy. I choose joy. I yield to joy. Yeah. And I thought, wow, that is so great. Because in that moment, she was able to stop, which is what we have to do. And I yeah. <laughs> tell me. Well, the Bible says that's be self-controlled. Right. And that's that. We have to stop. <laughs> and we have to make the choice. Okay? This is how you deal with the pressure. You stop. And you make the choice. Yeah. And, and you have to yield to it. You don't want to yield to it. What I really mm -hmm. want to do is just punch a hole in this exactly. something. Oh, <laughs> that's what I really want to do. <laughs> you know what? Exactly. Yes, I will tell you what. <laughs> exactly. I have to watch myself. But what we have to do is stop. Mm -hmm. And we have to, okay, make a choice. Yeah. And that's what... Um, our pastor's wife, she told me when we were talking, she said, you know, I have found with my kids and my husband, <laughs> okay. it is less about choosing your battles and more about choosing your response. And nobody wants to hear and that. nobody <laughs> wants to hear that. And you probably don't want to hear that either. But uh, I think a lot of times, too, we think that's not going to change anything. It's just changing how I'm responding. But that will change things because when you change your response, it does change what's going on. You know, you're not just yes, changing your response. It does. Why? Well, right. well, we can't keep doing the same things over and over right. and expecting a different result. That's result. insanity. Exactly. So what we have to do is choose our response. We have to stop ourselves. Choose our response. We have Then we have to yield to that. Mm-hmm. 
we have to yield. We talked about grace. Our, we said something in the last devotion, and I was like, wow, that was for me. Because I'm always trying to do this right. myself. I can be self-controlled. I can do this. I can do that. I can do my part. Right. And my part is well, coming. Matthew. My part is Matthew 11, 28, and 30. Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden. Right. Me. That's me. <laughs> and I will give you rest. Right. And my burden is easy, and my yoke mm -hmm. is light, okay? This is not always easy to do, but it is simple. Yeah. So my part is to come to Him, and then when He takes my burden, I have to let it go. I have to yield mm -hmm. to that, and yield to that grace that He gives me that is strength beyond what I have in myself. Yeah. And yield to the fruits of the Spirit. Love, mm -hmm. joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, self-control, goodness, self -control, goodness. Mm -hmm. all those good things. We have to yield to that. And every situation is different. There's no set formula. <laughs> so we have to yield to that. And like I said, there's no set formula. But there is the answer. Those are the answers. Mm -hmm. You get there. You build that foundation. You renew your mind daily, daily, right. daily. Over and over and over. Even if it's one scripture. You Even know, if it's one scripture. Yeah, I think a lot of times we feel like we have to get everything. And we have to have 50 scriptures on this topic. While it's I good do. to do a study... Study. I say that funny. Steady. A steady on scripture. If you just have one verse that really speaks to you, then that's the one you need to take and put on a note card or put somewhere. And it's not a um. I don't know what that and like me saying that, it's not a mantra like people doing yoga. You know, mm -hmm. no you've sad. got yeah. <laughs> um. You have to have that foundation. You have to have renewed your mind in that. So when I'm saying that. I'm choosing by faith. Okay, God, mm -hmm. I'm choosing your way. On purpose. On purpose. And I am trusting you to do your part. I'm coming unto you and I'm choosing joy now. God, I have to trust that God's going to do his part in that moment. Right, right. Exactly. But you've got to have that found. That's where the foundation comes in. Because right. if you don't know the word. Faith in that. Yeah, if you don't know what the word says about anything, then you're not going to have a foundation to go back on. I mean, you can say I choose joy because we've talked about it but but you it, can't do that your faith can't be that's why yeah. I think God made it that way that there's no set way to deal with that there's right. no set way it's because we have to come in that faith in him mm -hmm. and if we just had a certain set formula that we did then our faith would be in that formula and in doing it that way mm -hmm. so your faith has to be in God hey I know what those girls said yeah, yeah they are <laughs> those girls said uh i have to build a foundation yeah and that's what we want you to remember those girls said you had to get in the word yeah and build your own foundation and then like she said even if it's just one scripture and you just have to say it to yourself over and over mm -hmm. say you're facing financial pressure and you just my god shall supply my needs according to his riches and glory mm -hmm. and you say that till it gets it's in meditating your spirit. it is meditating, on, meditating on the word and so when that financial pressure comes against you you turn around and, and you, you look at that financial pressure mm -hmm. and you say devil you're a liar yeah you are a liar and the thoughts you are putting in my head that I will not be able to make it and that I will not survive they are not of God and they are not part of God's mm -hmm. word because God's word says that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory mm -hmm. now devil you get on out of here in the name of Jesus That's and it. you know what five minutes later he may come Guess back what? You'll you probably hear, you're not going to make it. You can't <laughs> oh, pay those yeah? bills. And you know what you do? You turn around and you say, devil, you're a liar. Right. <clears throat> and those that's thoughts taking, are not the word of God. That's taking every thought captive and putting mm -hmm. it under the obedience of the word of God. And it will work. You know, it's not just saying it and, you know, well, ultimately, you know, I'm not going to be able to pay my bills, but I feel better about it. No, when you start speaking the word of God, it goes to work for you. You're doing your part by standing mm -hmm. in faith confessing the word of God that you believe and have meditated on you're confessing it those things are going to come to pass all the devil can do is lie to you and try to deceive you and get you off the steal, word kill, and to destroy. steal kill and destroy right so so your job is to come to God and his mm -hmm. job is to fulfill his promises yeah and that's how you deal with the pressure <laughs> I hope that this was a help to you in mm -hmm. some way and we pray for you mm -hmm pray for you every day and I pray that God will speak through these devotions and hopefully we'll be back with you again soon <laughs> we'll see
You can do it. You can do this. Walk in love and walk in faith and have fun. Bye. Bye.